Welcome to our service today from the Ingleborough team of churches. At the moment we are still in a period of national mourning as this service airs. On Monday the 19th will be Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's funeral at Westminster Abbey. And so we continue to grieve for the loss of the monarch and sovereign of uh, the United Kingdom. But while we can look back with thankfulness on all that the Queen has brought to the life of not just this nation but also the Commonwealth and the world, we can look forward with hope. And while the funeral is a time to grieve and mourn, there will be days ahead when we must look to the future. And I'm sure that His Majesty King Charles III is doing just that already, even though he and the rest of the royal family are, of course, still sad for the loss of a beloved mother. So in this service, we're going to be doing likewise, looking back with thankfulness, uh, praying for all of us who mourn, and especially for the royal family, and again looking forward with hope. So as we begin, let's pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for the life of your servant, Queen Elizabeth, for her faith and her dedication to duty. Bless our nation as we mourn her death and may her example continue to inspire us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's now sing in worship. Thank you. 
just sung is newly commissioned in honour of Her Majesty. It's called Tears and Celebrations. It was commissioned by the London Institute of Contemporary Christianity and the Bible Society. It spoke of all the qualities that we have seen in Her Majesty and all that inspired, animated and breathed life into those qualities a true and strong faith in Jesus Christ. Now let's turn to our reading for this service. This reading is from St John's Gospel, chapter 6. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Lord and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Well, let me share a few thoughts and reflections, bringing together uh, some themes from the Bible reading that we heard from John's Gospel and also about Her Majesty the Queen. In the reading, Jesus talks about life. He calls himself the bread of life. And much of what he talks about promising and offering in the reading centers around that that idea of life it's one of the rich themes of the gospel of john popping up in a number of places and we may think to ourselves well i'm already alive i might see that as a gift of god some people may not i'm already alive what does jesus need to talk about offering life for well, that theme is uh, richer and deeper than just simply being alive. Jesus talks about uh, resurrection life, the life beyond death, but he also talks about satisfying life. That's part of what he means when he talks about himself as the bread of life. Life that truly satisfies. You're not merely uh, existing, it's living, a satisfying life. And these are the things that he offers, life in the last day beyond death and satisfying life. And that can begin here and now by faith. That's what he offers. That's what is central to his mission and indeed to who he is. He is the bread of life. And that life 
sustained the life that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II lived among us. Her faith in Jesus Christ made her who she is. All the things that we can give thanks for, all the qualities seen in her, all the many things that are being said of her and have been said of her, particularly in this Jubilee year, are in, at least in part animated by that faith because that faith brings a connection with Jesus Christ who is the bread of life. And one of the great qualities of Her Majesty the Queen was her uh, consistency, her faithfulness, her steadfastness in all the, the good things and all the duties that were required of her, her life of service, all that she gave, she was consistent in doing it. And I think that consistency gave it power and influence beyond the power and influence that she has as a monarch the consistency of it made it all the more authentic and hence powerful and influential and the way that she uh, uh, conducted herself with a quiet dignity was all the more remarkable and simply added to the appreciation that many have felt of all that she brought and all that she was. But from some of the things that she said over the years, I believe we can know that she knew her need to be sustained by Christ. She knew that she needed God's grace, his gifts, his life. She testified on a number of occasions of how important her faith was to her and all that faith brought to her. I believe we can say that she was nourished by Jesus, the bread of life. This idea of uh, bread, being the bread of life, it's a daily staple of the world. And that surely is part of it. Give us this day our daily bread. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus uses language of our daily needs being met. And bread is one of those things that we need daily, a daily staple of life. We need sustaining. And that's what he's saying about himself. He sustains. But we also need to remember that grace is spiritual. This, Jesus is talking about the life of God inside us, sustaining us, bringing uh, life in its fullness to us. Yes, we see the grace of God sometimes miraculously bursting into this world and changing things physically. But God promises through Christ that it will always be there his grace with us spiritually to sustain us. And we'll see his grace, his love, his, all his blessings fully, finally, and without a shadow of a doubt on that last day that Jesus talked about. And one of the other aspects of this grace, this connection, this life of God that the queen knew about was that it is free. It costs us nothing. It costs God plenty to send his son into the world, to die for the life of the world, but it costs us nothing. Jesus says, anyone who comes, I will never drive away. It's invitational, this passage, just come. Come, you are welcome. Come, no questions asked. You don't need to bring anything. You don't need to be anything. Just come and receive the bread of life. And I believe Her Majesty was a great advocate for that, that openness to the good news, to the welcome of God. She knew that, she lived it, and she proclaimed it. 
often in her Christmas messages. So often she would point to Jesus and to the, the openness of his grace, that Jesus is for all. She knew it and she proclaimed it. And the last thing is, because it is free, it brings us hope for the future because it will always be free. It will always be for us, the life of God. It's been good to see and to hear our new king speaking of his faith and how it has been so influential for him. Once again, hope drawn from the life of God. In this time, I do believe that we will see the Christian faith and the connection that animates the faith proclaimed in the world, shaping the nations, God's life at work in the world. That gives us hope. And we can know because Jesus says it, because Her Majesty believed it, and because it's proclaimed to us that Jesus will sustain us, whatever we face. So just come and receive the bread of life. Amen. Now let's turn to our prayers, led today by some of the church wardens of our team. As we mourn the death of Elizabeth our Queen, let us give thanks to God in faith and trust. For the gift of Christ Jesus 
and for all whose devotion to him has sustained the life of our church and nation. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. For Her late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and all the royal family, for the ministers of the Crown and all who bear the privilege and burden of government, let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. For all people touched by Queen Elizabeth's devotion to public service, let us bless the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. For our own lives, giving thanks for all those who have gone before and asking that we might go forward with confidence and hope, let us bless the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Father of all mercies and God of all consolation, you pursue us with untiring love and dispel the shadow of death with the bright dawn of life. Give courage to the royal family in their loss and sorrow. Be their refuge and strength, O Lord. Reassure them of your continuing love and lift them from the depths of grief into the peace and light of your presence. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Your Holy Spirit, our Comforter, speaks for us in groans too deep for words. Come alongside your people, remind them of your eternal presence and give them your comfort and strength. Lord God, you provide for your people by your power and rule over them in love. Grant to your servant, our King, the spirit of wisdom and discernment that being devoted to you with his whole heart, he may so wisely govern, that in his time we may live in safety and in peace. O oh God, in whom we live and move and have our being, grant that your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, that we may ever trust in your unfailing love, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In conclusion of our prayers now, I'm going to lead us in a prayer of commendation, where we commend Her Majesty into the hands of Almighty God. Prayers like this often are part of the grieving process. And so in this prayer, it's for us to resolve in ourselves to leave her in the hands of God. To commend her to him, to his mercy. Confident in her faith and in God's love. God, our creator and redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and returns to you in glory. Confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust your servant Elizabeth into your keeping. In the name of Jesus our Lord, who, though he died, is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
as we reflect on the life of service and faith that Her Majesty the Queen brought to our nation. Uh, we're going to hear from uh, our former team rector, Anne Russell, uh, a great friend to our parishes, who is shortly to be made uh, an honorary canon of Wakefield Cathedral uh, for her service to the diocese. I managed to catch up with Anne at a recent clergy conference uh, and uh, just asked her how things were going and what message she had for the parishes of our team. So I'm really grateful to be here with Anne once again. And we're here at the conference. Uh, so Anne, how are things going? Hi everybody. Um, if you don't remember me, I'm Anne. Hope you remember me. Greetings from Seacroft in Leeds and Hope University in Liverpool, where clergy from Leeds have got together just to be inspired and renewed and sent out with the good news of the gospel to be inspired again. So um, wait for it because uh, Nick will come back inspired, uh, ready to, to spread the good news across the Ingleborough team. Um, I hope you're well. Um, I miss you all hugely. Uh, Seacroft is, is going okay. We're definitely in the foothills of, of growing and uh, recovering uh, in the churches there. Um, the need is overwhelming, I have to say, of people's lives. People are really um, in, in, in the chaos of poverty um, through uh, money or health. Um, or education, or family background, or abuse, or oh, you name it, we've got it in Seacroft, um, but I do value your prayer, so please do um, continue to pray for people, and as I continue to pray for uh, the Ingleborough team and the beautiful uh, churches of the Ingleborough team, which I miss greatly. Thank you for joining us in this service as we have prayed, looked back and looked forward that we may build our lives on thankfulness to God and on hope for the future. Uh, do please, if you haven't done so already, call into any of our churches in the team to sign books of condolence for Her Majesty and the Royal Family. Uh, all our churches are open uh, and many more than they would normally be during this time of national mourning where you can come and just spend some quiet moments in prayer and reflection. If you're local to us and are able to join us for the vigil service here at St Mary's Church uh, on the day this video goes live, uh, Sunday the 18th, it's at 7 o'clock here. If you're able to join us, just for uh, a quiet service of about half an hour where we'll reflect and pray uh, and just be together as we prepare for Her Majesty's uh, funeral on Monday the 19th. So do join us tonight, seven o'clock. Let me close with a final prayer of blessing. May God give to you and to all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.